Bell Steel Arbiter's Mark is a tactical role-playing game currently available on Steam and soon to be available on Switch, August 14th to be exact. So if you are kind of teetering on whether or not to pick this thing up and you have a Switch, I would highly recommend picking it up on there. The controller support on this thing is fantastic. So we're going to start totally fresh. I'm going to basically go over a couple of things and then I'm going to switch over to the save where I've already beaten the game. Uh, we're going to avoid any story spoilers or anything like that. Uh, and then I'll show you guys what a more advanced character sheet looks like. You're going to see a little bit of combat, but you're also going to see a whole lot of this menu. This is your troops menu. Everything happens in here. You manage your squad here on uh, uh, in every possible fashion. You also craft through this menu. Uh, you also manage your inventory through this menu. You equip your character through this menu. Like everything happens even when you go to the shop. Yeah, th you're gonna be living in this particular screen. And thank God it has just like the best song on the entire soundtrack. I mean, the whole thing is actually pretty pretty uh, exceptional actually. Uh, but this one song is just my favorite, and it's in the menu. I mean, all the time. Now, the first thing we should do is actually select our primary protagonist here, Kyrie. Kyrie has uh, a, a, a two classes that are associated with her right now. She has the uh, the mercenary class, which is her primary class, and then she has a secondary class that she's reaping some benefits from, some spells and whatnot. One thing you should note is when you get in, you actually start playing, is that some of your characters don't have a secondary class. Because of that, they're actually going to be missing out on an entire, entire separate uh, uh, sheet of spells that would otherwise be probably pretty handy. And so what you do is go in here and say, okay, let me go ahead and assign this guy to, uh, 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 let's go ahead and make him a, a mercenary here. Equipment's changed. Now he's a mercenary and scoundrel. Uh, if I went through and I changed him back to maybe a mender, uh, equipment changed. Now he's a mender slash scoundrel. So that secondary uh, 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 class right there can actually be modified here by go to set abilities and we go to trickery. And this is where we say, okay, we go with trickery down to which is a scoundrel class uh, uh, a sheet of abilities and whatnot. And over here, this list is from the mercenary class. So if I change to this, now I am Mender Mercenary. But just know that you don't necessarily have to play every single character in order to level them up. They will get experience uh, vicariously through characters who are playing uh, in that particular match. So for example, if I go over here to learn abilities and I go and take a look at Scoundrel here, uh, you can see I actually have, I can level up Scoundrels a little bit, but he also has a little bit of Mender uh, and also a little bit of Mercenary uh, uh, AP there. Now, he has never been a Mender. Outside of me just literally right now, just selecting Mender uh, to show you guys and demonstrate how the classes are aligned at the bottom there, uh, he has actually never actually played as a Mender. But another character that I have has Kyrie. She was playing as a mender for just a brief moment for one particular match. Uh, and so because of that, he vicariously learned a little bit of AP. And the more you play some of these other characters, the more that kind of trickles down to this character uh, or to your other characters and you're able to go through unlock uh, different uh, d different perks and different abilities for that particular class. Now, uh, I'll go ahead and show you here the leveling up process for the Scoundrel. We open this up here and I have a little bit of AP and I could turn around and spend that on, I already have a little bit in Dirty Hits. I could put it in Fleet Foot, which Fleet of Foot, which basically gives you three rounds. You can move an additional uh, square. Uh, it is an area effect, so you can actually impact people around you. Uh, you can actually free up a whole bunch of people who might be rooted. None of this means shit after about 40 hours of play. You're going to have so many classes to play with and so many different combinations of abilities and all kinds of weird stuff you can put together that picking whatever you pick first right here doesn't really mean anything. But if you're playing on the veteran or above level, like for example, hard or very hard, you will absolutely want to be very careful what it is you select as you level, as you level up, make sure you choose something that makes a bit more sense for, uh, uh, for the difficulty that you're actually in. I'm, I'm in, I'm in casual mode right now for the purpose of this particular demonstration. So, uh, uh <laughs> so it doesn't really matter what the fuck I pick. <laughs> I actually went in with three, I went in with three units on a match and actually ended up beating, uh, uh beating one of the first encounters that, on veteran mode, I would have got just completely, just, just, just completely mopped. Uh, right here, you see it says level four scoundrel uh, attained. Ranger class has been unlocked. Every class has a different set of requirements. This one requires mercenary level four, knight level four, and ranger four. So you can't just pick any any class you want. You have to actually spec in or actually level up certain classes in order to get the, uh, I guess you say, prior experience. Uh, 
and take that and, and apply it towards this new job. Uh, and then hopefully you get hired for it because that's the, the requirements that they actually lay out, uh, lay out for you right there. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see growth. Now this is something I actually just learned recently. Now keep in mind, I've beaten the game. It's taken me 80 hours to beat the game. Uh, 80 hours of actual play time, 60 hours I think on the actual save, which means I have 20 hours or so uh, in failures. Uh, and that was playing on veteran mode for the entire time. So uh, veteran is difficult. Uh, difficult enough that you're going to be spending a lot of time going back and redoing things just so you don't have to necessarily worry about, you know, injuries or you could progress, just so you could progress the story, really. Uh, so on the right hand side, it says growth and it says my HP grows 6.5, 2.5, 3.5, 5, all the way down here. What that means is as this class, if you look, my character Rainer is level three. If I were to stay a scoundrel and continue to level up, let's say to level 10, I will have gained that amount per level. Uh, as an example, I have a, I have a character that is an assassin and she has just the most absurd speed. In a tactical RPG, your speed just basically determines how frequently your turn comes up. The speed portion is very, very important because it allows you to plan out essentially how you maneuver uh, certain characters who may have synergy with each other uh, around the map. So if you have a character, as an example, I have my, like I mentioned, I have my assassin and she has the ability to teleport to another character and switch positions with them, okay? Now this is important because what I can do with some characters is I can, uh, let's say if I get to the edge of a lake, and then I, then I teleport or basically switch spots with an enemy and I put them on the edge of a lake and maybe that enemy does not have the ability to swim because you can see that on their character sheet at the bottom if they can swim or, or not. Uh, and then if I do that, I can have another character. For example, I have another character that has a ranged knockback that will knock somebody back one square. And so I basically switch with one character and then I knock them into the water with the other character and it's an instant kill. But yeah, let's go ahead and look at the equipment here. The equipment, you can see it's empty. It's empty, why? What, hap what happened to my weapons? Because I don't have a weapon that, or she was not equipped with a weapon that was compatible with her with her class. So automatically took off. It says all these, oh. <laughs> okay. So it says these pieces of equipment are already equipped by somebody else. Kyrie, oh, Kyrie's got it, okay. Well, let me see, I have a buckler. I have a circlet. I mean, everything is worn. You can see it says worn and held. I have, I means I have one and it's worn. That's pretty self-explanatory there. So what this means is I actually don't have a weapon that's compatible with her particular class. So I could choose to actually go to the shop and buy one if I wanted to, uh, or I can strip Kyrie of her weapon and hope that there's another weapon, like for example, the two-handed hammer that she just put down in order to become a knight. Uh, and then maybe Kyrie can use that. As a matter of fact, that could be possible. I should very quickly switch over to Kyrie right now. See if Kyrie wants to pick that thing up. The mall, boom, done. I go back over here to Anna Dean and she, boom, she can pick that up. Look at, there it is. And then she also get a buckler too. Speaking of classes, uh, there's a reason why I have so many classes uh, over here. And the reason why is that I have one, story earned some of these things uh, or through regular progression or two, I have actually crafted these. Yes, you can craft your classes, like find items and then turn around and use those, those consumable items uh, to, to, to basically turn somebody into another class and it permanently unlocks for that particular person as well. Uh, is this fucking cool? And there's so many different classes that are just extra classes. And then, and then of course, <laughs> of course, I didn't, and again, I, this is totally left field for me. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm unlocking all the class, all these classes, and that's, this is great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have like this, this huge army of all these like super talented soldiers that could do all this crazy stuff and I can mix and match things depending on where I wanna go and all that. And then they introduce you to another race that has its own classes. <laughs> like just a ton of just new classes to go through. And, I, and as you can see, I have not touched this at all. Now, before we get into anything else, let's get into crafting. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the items and stuff that you can build. You can see, I don't really have a whole lot of things currently available. If I go down to badges, by, by red, readily available, I mean that I don't really have a whole lot of things actually unlocked. If I look here and I see I have full potion, uh, and that's pretty much it. And I have I have four dark cores. I just need I just need a jammy fruit, and then I can complete this particular potion upgrade. Uh, I should have this actually, but I, I guess I don't. I guess I don't. I'm just lazy. Now the way it works is you have a list of usable items that you can go through while you're actually in combat, and that list of usable items can be uh, can be upgraded. And then you can collect resources and craft all these things, upgrade your potions, upgrade your your, uh, your your combat res, you can upgrade your fucking rock, 
Okay, like there's all these things that you could just upgrade if you wanted to. And that is, uh, that's, that's, that's a key part of progression because there are certain classes that actually rely heavily on these upgrades. For example, the uh, the peddler can actually take any particular, the peddler class could take any particular item, usable item, uh, and it will be an AOE effect. It's just part, it's just part of that class. You could just throw a rock. Uh, I should also mention the engineer. The engineer, you have to craft the engineer's items. These are all equipable items that you can actually go through and uh, equip on your character. Some of them give some pretty significant boosts, like for example, flippers. Flippers you can give to a character, and guess what? They can now swim. They they move. Uh, they have like uh, not move, but they um, they actually lose a little bit of speed on their speed stat there. But once you get to once you get to the higher levels, that the, the, the minus three is really nothing. Now taking a look at the bottom left corner there, you can see that he is. Uh, his debuff immunities include bleeding, he's immune to blind, he's immune to cripple, uh, he's immune to slow, and all this is attributed by various pieces of gear. He also has some resistances here. Uh, you can see that there is your water, fire, earth, uh, uh, lightning or thunder actually, uh, shadow and holy or light, whatever. Um, now he has an immunity to, uh, not immunity, but he has a resistance to, to holy damage. So if he goes 1v1 a priest, he's going to obviously come out on top. Um, and so these immunities are pretty important because as cer at a certain point, like if we take a look at another character over here, if we take a look at this character here, he has a, a resistance to shadow damage and it's high enough that hitting this guy, even with a friendly fire shadow spell, will actually heal him. Uh, if I take a look at some other characters here, somebody that has, here we go, the Phoenix Band. This, you put this on and she just automatically gets uh, a buff of having rebirth, just from the get-go. Now, if you want to add more people to your, <laughs> everyone says it looks like Jesse Cox and I totally believe it, it does look like Jesse Cox, doesn't it? Uh, if you want to add more folks to your roster, you could go through the recruitment phase, uh, recruitment uh, uh, area, which is in pretty much every town. Every town you got to go through and click on and you could say, do you want to actually uh, patrol the area? Do you want to go to the shop or do you want to go to uh, go and hire some more folks? And so in this case, you can actually go through, you can see level one, upper right corner, level one, 500 gold points. It basically costs you nothing, but he's level one, so it's kind of useless. But if I go to toggle back, Level 48, 24,000 points. So basically you're just paying your way in order to advance the character to whatever the max level is and then you can basically take over from there. And there's a ton of stuff you could do. You can randomize uh, the, uh, the looks of the characters and make some really funky things. Uh, you take a look at their face. Like there, you can't really see too much difference in the faces. So you're not really doing too much custom. I mean, eye color, like okay, you, uh, you mean most of the time they're wearing a helmet anyways. But still, if even if you wanted to let, let let their hair down, uh, so to speak, literally the hair is going to be the most defining piece for that character. You're never going to have these really up close shots of the character, so you don't really have to worry about the character looking. Uh, having that much detail at all. Uh, here you can go to change appearance. This is where you can go through and actually pick a character and change their appearance if you want to, but you can only do it with characters that are not story characters. Story characters have their clothes and they like their clothes. If I wanted to, I can actually go through uh, and we'll hop back into the shop. And over here in the shop, this is where you go through and you can buy stuff. I'm not gonna show you how to go through and buy all this stuff. I will show you try and buy, which is something that should be every goddamn game ever. Every game ever. Here's all the all the different things I could, I could switch to. I could go through and say, I want this. And then I go over here and I say, I want this. And then over here, I can say, yeah, I want uh, this. This is a really dumb build, but we're just going to do it anyways. And then da 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 da. And there we go. This is fucking. I can't believe they let me do that. <laughs> Apparently, Katja could basically use anything. And then if I wanted to back out, I would say, do you, are you happy with your purchases? I'm going to say, yeah, confirm purchases. Upper right corner says it cost me $16,000 to make this massive mistake uh, on this character. But I'm going to go ahead and say, cancel purchases and get out. Uh, so, yes, it is. It, the try and buy thing, I I feel like every damn game should have it because it really helps you go through and especially when you have like 17 characters to manage and you're going through and you're putting gear on every single one of them, uh, you're gonna want to have that kind of flexibility in terms of uh, of what they're uh, of, of being able to kit everybody out and then make the purchase. Now you probably noticed that some of my characters here are kneeling. Now that is the injury system. And so what happens is if your character is uh, is killed in combat or knocked out during combat. Uh, and even if they're rezzed, okay, even if they are rezzed, unless it's rebirth, rebirth and a couple other spells will actually bypass the, the penalty. But if they go down and then you have to, even if you res them using another spell, they will actually obtain an injury. And an injury is basically just a reduction in stats. I believe it's 10% as a stats. Uh, now, how do you cure injury uh, or, in or injuries? 
Uh, injury is cured by playing through a match without that character in tow. And so basically you go and you play through a match and usually what I do, what I do is I play like a low level match that's like super easy. I'll send like one character in there just to wipe everybody just for fun because it's, it's, it's fun. Uh, and then after that, come back and ta-da, now my characters are no longer injured. And now keep in mind, if your character, let's say, you know, dies in combat, and then you use a potion, Phoenix Ashes, to, to raise them back from the dead. And then they fucking die again, because this happens. They will they will get two injuries. It'll be injury times two, which means you have to play through that same match twice in order to bring it back down. Now, you don't have to play through the low-level stuff you don't want to. You can play through basically anything you want, but you have to go through two or however many encounters uh, is equal to the number of injuries your characters have sustained. Back here on the world map, you can see I have a lot of stuff unlocked. None of this stuff is really gonna mean anything to you guys until you guys start playing, so don't really worry about spoilers or whatnot. You can't really see anything, anything on here anyways. There are about 50 something different encounters uh, or different uh, stages, I should say. Uh, probably more, but but in terms of the main storyline, there are about 50 different scenes that you could go through. And they're, they're not procedurally generated or anything like that. The the enemies and all that that are on there are procedurally generated based off of a certain criteria. Like, for example, if you're in the wilderness, you're going to have these wildernessy y mobs and everything showing up, uh, like beasts and whatnot. Uh, if, you're on a, if you're on a pirate ship, guess what? You're going to have pirate ship pirates show up and maybe some like sea creatures or some weird stuff like that. Now, one thing we should talk about is patrolling. We're going to get into the encounters themselves in a minute, but... Patrolling is very, very important. Any, every other one of these points, uh, especially after you complete a certain encounter, you can actually go through and decide if you want to actually go through and patrol that particular area. And what that means when you go to patrol something is you basically just redo that level with a new set of mobs. It was probably a story, it was probably a story setting before. It's still the same physical setting, but the actual enemies and everything are going to change depending on what's going to be there, right? Or what, uh, what, what whatever the, uh, the guidelines are for that particular area. Uh, but you're going to need to do a couple of patrols. If you're playing on hard, very hard, or even veteran, there's going to be situations where you're going to need to go through and do a little bit of grinding in order to get your characters, uh, uh maybe more abilities unlocked, maybe farm up some money, uh, maybe farm up just some more XP period and just level up period. Uh, there's a number of different things that you can benefit from going through and doing patrols, even collection of mats. Like some, there are mats that are scattered throughout the world that you use for crafting, and so you're going to need to go through and, and collect those as you as you play, basically. Now, the first thing to note for any encounter is that you have a certain number of starting units that you can actually begin with, right? Now, that is uh, dependent on the level, but for the most part, it's six. Sometimes you'll see seven. Uh, very rarely you see five or four. Uh, and anytime you see those, usually it's because it's a story mission that requires a certain character to be present, and that takes up one of your slots. Uh, and so that's the only time you really have to worry about that. But for the most part, especially when you go back and you do patrols where you're not necessarily bound by story, uh, you're able to actually go through and maybe say, okay, I don't want Kyrie to be, yeah, Kyrie's, Kyrie's the number one protagonist in this game, okay? But listen, I, I don't want to play with her right now. I'm going to play with these other six people. Well, you could do that in your patrols for sure. Uh, now, your initial setup is going to be very important. It's very critical when you first get started, especially on the harder difficulties, that right out the gate, you have some kind of upper hand. And I talked already about speed being a big deal. Uh, other things are like, for example, fleet of foot, being able, having a character that has a decent amount of speed or put them, or maybe put them around a bunch of other characters who don't have a significant amount of speed. Uh, and so you know that your turn will come up first. You could give them the fleet, foot, fleet of foot buff, giving them the extra movements, and then you could take off and do whatever you need to do. But you've at least done your part right out the gate again uh, on, uh, on providing some kind of benefit to the team. Now, this is important because a lot of times your first move is not going to be, uh, uh, it's, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. Uh, you're not going to attack an enemy right off the gate, especially if you're melee. You're not going to reach the enemy right off, right off the bat, you know, in most, in mo in most scenarios. Uh, so you want to do something with that first turn to make it valuable. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and explain to you guys how to synergize different, uh, different characters and abilities and all that stuff. I've already done that enough. Uh, I'm not going to show you guys, uh, you know, very in-depth strats or anything like that because, uh, well, there's so many different class combinations that if I show you a particular strat, you may literally never see this class combination ever again. So there's really no reason for me to show you this stuff because it's up to you guys when you play to create your own custom characters, your own custom builds, your own custom configuration and synergies and all that stuff and find out what works for you. Uh, but I do want to show you guys just some of the general layout here. You can see that every, every character can move a tile, but another thing uh, that it's very, that you absolutely should keep in mind is the height. The character does have a height stat. You can 
then you can actually boost that using uh, certain uh, certain pieces of equipment that'll give you a better jump, basically give you some more hops. Uh, but that is something that you're gonna have to manage on your own. Some classes just can't jump, man. Some people just can't jump, and then you have to throw some boots on them or like three boots, which is really weird. Uh, and then then they could jump. Uh, but even spells have a vertical limit, and every single spell. Uh, usually there is, especially if it's a range spell or something you could throw at somebody, uh, usually you see that there is a limit to how high you can reach. And so if you get into a map that has a whole lot of vertical happening, you're, you're probably going to want to bring a, either a character that can teleport and move up and down, or as, as like uh, some boots that let them jump all the way up there, uh, or you're going to have to uh, get maybe get some spells together that don't necessarily... Uh, uh, are not necessarily impacted by vertical by the vertical stat and I'm actually as I'm saying I'm trying to think if there is any spells that are not impacted by vertical stat that are offensive abilities and I really can't even name one but I'm sure they're out there I'm sure they are now one thing you should know is that the the, the enemy AI can be very cunning uh, if you think if you think that you know your character is okay I know my character is weak to this but they'll never find out no they will find out and they will, once they discover that this character has a weakness, they will do everything in their power to exploit it. For example, when you can look at an enemy and see that they can't swim, guess what? They can look at you and know that you can't swim. So be careful because they also have abilities that allow them to move, maneuver uh, or move or force move a character from one point to another. And they will very, they damn well will move a character from a nice, safe, solid ground to the drink. Uh, if they if they see that you cannot swim. So this stuff is really, really important because a lot of times in a lot of strategy games, you feel like you could get over on the AI because you could just, oh yeah, the, the, the game's not gonna pay attention to this kind of thing, so I could just use this to my advantage. You should know that you cannot do that. <laughs> Every once in a while, you'll find a quirk in the AI and you're like, wow, this AI is super dumb. And you feel like you're getting over on it, but then you're gonna, but I, I assure you, more times than not, the AI will absolutely surprise you. Uh, they are very, very cunning and they will exploit weakness. Uh, they will gang up on somebody. If you res somebody, they don't have any health. Guess what? They're going to come right on over and they're going to beat that person back into the ground. So you have to plan ahead for these things because you have to plan. You have to plan as if you're playing another character, another person of equal skill uh, when you're playing on the veteran and above difficulty modes. In casual mode, I've seen them do some dumb things. Just just be I'm the character there that's like a far away from death. And yet this person will turn around and attack somebody else. So it's it's very possible that on the in the easier difficulty levels, you're not gonna have too much of an issue getting over on the AI. But but just as a warning, once you uh once you go up to the uh, veteran above, you're gonna have to start planning accordingly. Now there really is so much, so much more. I, I actually cut down this review. My initial take on this was 57 minutes and I actually cut it all the way down to like, what, 25 minutes or whatever. Uh, and the reason why is because frankly, I was just giving you guys too much. You you could need, you need to get in and actually just explore and discover some of these things. There's treasures, you could go and look up mods for this thing. Somebody actually made a mod that adds Final Fantasy Tactic classes. So since you can't really get Final Fantasy Tactics anywhere, uh, why not just mod this one <laughs> to, <laughs> you know, but to be Final Fantasy Tactics on PC or or whatever? Uh, it's it's just it's it's just a superb game, probably one of my favorite games this year so far. Uh, and I really I don't see anything else on the horizon that's gonna dethrone it, to be honest. But I it's twenty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. It's really it's it's really a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, you know, at that price, just ridiculous. So, my name is Mike B. Thank you so much for your guys' support. You can check me out on patreon.com slash aka Mike B, where they get an early access to these videos. I want to do more in-depth things like this. Not so much first impressions. Maybe we'll make something separate for first impressions, but I like doing this in-depth stuff. It reminds me of doing the BFF report. Remember those days? That was awesome. I really like that kind of stuff. It just takes me a little bit longer to do this. This particular video, I'm actually recording the last bit of line right now. Right now, as I'm talking to you, this is the last bit before I hit render. Uh, and it's taken me about a week to make this after I finish the game. So it's a, <laughs> it's, it takes a long time to edit these things and put them together, but the final product, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Uh, and again, I will see y'all. Bye.